In this tutorial, we're going to learn to make this little baby hat called the Baby Gnome Hat. And this is a pattern by Maureen Hefty from Ravidus Knits. If you'd like to get your own copy of this pattern and follow along, you can click the link that I've given you in the video description field just below the video. This, the full title of this is Ex Incredible Expanding Gnome Cap. And it's the truth. This hat is, uh, in the smallest size is made for a preemie, but the baby can wear it for a long time because it is super stretchy. It's also really fun to knit. Now, I discovered this pattern when um, my knitting group, one of the knitting classes that I teach, we were focused on charity knitting this quarter. And we decided that we wanted to make preemie caps for the newborn intensive care unit at a local hospital. Um, so that's when I found this pattern. And I also learned a lot about charity knitting for places like the NICU unit at um, our local hospital. If you are gonna make these for charity, I suggest you call the hospital and see if they have some specifications for what they need. Like at our hospital, they had some rules, um, some things they asked. They said no wool um, because of allergies, no yellow because some of the babies are jaundiced. Make sure that the, um, the yarn is washable and dryable. And uh, they asked that we wash the caps in a baby laundry soap like Dreft before we bring them to the, um, the hospital. Now, another good thing we learned is that the nurses use these hats as soon as one hits the donation box, it's out of there. So we feel really good about the charity knitting we're doing this quarter because it is a much needed item. Um, in the pattern, Maureen tells us to use size one needles and sock yarn. And I'm going to tell you, you have a little bit of flexibility here because the pattern is so stretchy. I got the right size by using a sport weight, a baby weight yarn, and size three needles. So especially if you're knitting for charity um, and you're not trying to fit a specific baby, you will get a baby size hat if you play with the yarn weight and needle size a little bit because the hat is so stretchy. Um, and oh, another thing I found out from our hospital is that they need all sizes from preemie to full term or micro preemie, I think they called it, which is a teeny tiny hat up to full term. So um, that's enough of the intro. Next up, we're going to talk about a couple different ways of knitting this on DPNs or Magic Loop and a couple different cast ons. Once you have your free pattern and you've picked your needles and yarn, we're going to talk about a couple of different options you have for knitting this little hat. Um, you can either knit it on double pointed needles like this, or you can use a long circular needle to knit it magic loop like this. We're going to talk about both of them if, if um, one of them is new to you. Um, let's, just, <laughs> let's take a look at the hat here. Here I have a couple of different hats. I knit one longer than the other one, but we end up with this awesome little cable twist in there without using a cable needle. And like I said, the hat is really stretchy. And it's fun to knit and they're quick to knit. Okay. Here we have the double pointed needles just to give you a closer look at what's going on here. And using double pointed needles, we're able to knit in a tube because the three needles make a tube. And if you're casting on for double points, you put 25 stitches on the first two needles and 50 stitches on the third. And here we have Magic Loop. And this is a long circular needle that we're going to use to knit the tiny tube like this. And if you're doing it this way, you wanna put 50 stitches on each cord. Okay, but first let's talk about the cast on. In the pattern, Maureen recommends that we use uh, what's called a cable cast on. And um, I'll show you quickly how to do that. Although I, uh, I prefer the German twisted cast on, which I'm going to demonstrate in just a moment. Both are nice, stretchy cast ons. Whoops, to do the cable cast on, we don't need to leave a long tail. So you make a slip knot and put your needle, put your um, needle in that slip knot. I'm going to give a quick review of this, but I'll give you a link to working this, um, this cast on much more slowly than I'm gonna show you here. You put your needle in like you're going to knit, knit it, and then put that stitch up on the left needle. Okay, so now you have two, and this is where the cable cast on part of it really gets started. 
take your right needle, put it between the stitches. This is odd because we're not even going into a stitch. We're going between the stitches. Wrap the needle, pull that through, and then pull that stitch long and twist it and put it up on the needle and tighten it up. Okay, now we have three. The needle goes between the two stitches. Wrap it, pull that through, pull it long, twist it, put it up on the left needle and tighten it up. Okay, that's the cable cast on or a quick review of the cable cast on. Now I'll show you how to work the German twisted cast on. And for this one, you're going to need to leave a long tail. Since we're casting on 100, you want to leave an especially long tail. Okay, this is a quick review. I'll give you a link here if you want to have a slower review of this cast on. I'm going to start without a slip knot, and this looks a lot like the long tail cast on slingshot method. Um, got my needle here on this strand between my thumb and forefinger. I go under both loops on my thumb and back through one, grab the strand on my finger, untwist my thumb, and pull that um, loop through, tighten it up. Let me show you again. Both strands, one strand, over here, and back up and under. Oh, I did that the way that I normally do it. Um, I made it look so easy because I skipped a step. Okay, here, here we are. Straighten out your thumb and pull it through that loop. That's the trick of this. Under both strands, back under one, grab the strand on your finger, straighten out, or bend your thumb to remove the twist on this loop and pull that through. And once you get good at it, what I did that I did so quickly that I wanted to show you again is I just went up and under this strand and through rather than bending my thumb. I just uh, kind of darted through the strands. Okay, so uh, you need to cast on 100 stitches and then we're going to get started with ribbing. And I want to show you that. And our pattern tells us um, why don't I do it on double points? The pattern tells us to work a purl two, knit three ribbing. So to get started on the double points, set yourself up like this with the working yarn over on the right needle. Twist the, um, the left needle in front of you like this. This is going to be the first stitch. Your working yarn is here and this is going to be your first stitch. Check out the knots on all the other stitches and make sure nothing's twisted. Scoot that stitch to the end of the needle and we're going to start with a purl stitch. So I'll put my needle in as if to purl, grab the working yarn. You see I haven't really picked anything up from the table yet. The table's helping me keep things from getting twisted. Wrap the stitch and now it can't get twisted anymore. So I'm going to purl two. And now I need to go into knitting, so I'll pull the yarn back between the two needles to knit three. Pull the yarn forward between the two needles to purl two, and back to knit three. And for a little more review on working double pointed needles, once you get to the end of this needle, You'll have an empty needle in your right hand again, or you'll put the empty needle in your right hand, and your next stitch is always to the left of where you just left off, always to the left of your working yarn. So you work around this way. Next up, we're going to talk about um, reading charts versus reading the written instructions. Maureen has done a really great job writing this pattern and she gives us the choice of either using written instructions or charted instructions. And that's really good. People usually prefer one over the other and in this we get both. And if you haven't tried charted instructions, this might be a good uh, project for you to start. Let's take a look at the pattern. Okay, here we have the written instructions over here and this is the chart that you can follow. And um, on both with both methods, you're going to want to keep track of the row that you're on. That's very important. Um, with the written instructions, you're just going to go through each row, just like reading any other pattern. That's pretty clear. 
And with the charted instructions, there are a couple things I want to cover here. Um, because we're knitting in the round, you're always going to knit from the right to the left. You're always going to read the chart from the right to the left on every round. And you're going to, of course, want to keep track of where the beginning of your round is so that you know when to start the next round. And each one of these boxes is a stitch. And each one of the stitches has, um, uh, is represented with a little symbol. And down here in the chart key, you'll see what that symbol is. So in, on row one, it's pearl, pearl. And then this V is, um, oh, I'm sorry, it's not just the V. It's P, two, V. That's one stitch over three stitches, which is slip one, knit two, pass slip stitch over. We're going to cover each individual stitch in the next video part. And you repeat that all the way around the round. And then when you get back to the beginning of your round, you go to round two. Now, the reason we always read from right to left is because we're knitting in the round. If this was a flat piece, we'd read right side rows this way and wrong side rows from left to right. Um, I think that's all we needed to cover. I guess, no, one more thing I want to talk about. This uh, is all very clear on the first few rounds, uh, but then we start to get to these blacked out boxes, blacked out stitches. And in the chart key, it says no stitch, that it's a placeholder. And that's because we start decreasing for the top of the hat. So where there were stitches once, there are no stitches anymore. And when you read the chart through the black area, you just read across and the last stitch um, here, you just jump to here and jump to here. Just pretend the gray area isn't there. It just allows it to be a square chart. Okay, next up we're going to cover the individual stitches used in the cap. The last thing we have to cover in this tutorial are the individual stitches used um, in this pattern. And they are a little bit different from things you may have seen before, but it gives us the opportunity to work this cable twist without actually using a cable needle. I think it's great. Uh, let's take a look. This is a plain stockinette sample that I'm going to use to show you how to work these stitches. And I'm going to assume that you already know how to knit and purl. I'm going to knit a couple of stitches. The first thing that we see in, um, I'll pull this chart back down. The first thing that we see in this chart is a yarn over, which is represented by an O. Let me pull that down. Or a zero, okay? And to work a yarn over, you're going to pull the yarn forward between the two needles so it wraps the right needle and then just keep going with the next stitch. And it's always, in this pattern, it's always a knit stitch, a yarn over, and another knit stitch. So nothing complicated about that. It just makes um, an extra stitch, it's an increase, makes an extra stitch on the needle and leaves kind of a hole in the work right there. Okay, the next one is um, slip two, knit one, PSSO. And well, it's S2, K1, PSSO, which stands for slip two, knit one, pass slip stitch over. Or in this case, it's pass slip stitches over. And it's represented by this little symbol here, which we find in the decreases of the hat here. Okay, so the first thing I'm going to do is to slip two stitches. And you always slip as if to purl unless a pattern tells you otherwise. So I'm going to put my needle in as if to purl, two stitches, slip them over to the right. Then I'm going to knit one. And I need to pass these two slip stitches over this knit stitch. So it's kind of like binding off and it ends up being a double decrease. So I take the tip of my left needle, put it into those two stitches like I'm going to bind them off, lots of tension on the working yarn here to keep that stitch on the needle and pull that over. I'll show you one more time. Slip one, slip two, knit one, and pass these two stitches over the knit stitch. Okay, I'm actually going to undo that because I'm going to run out of stitches in my little swatch if I don't take something out here. Okay, the last one, and you, this is a stitch that you end up using right in the first row, is P2V, which is slip one, knit two, pass slip stitch over. And so it's very much like what we just did, but we're only going to pass one stitch over. So I'm going to slip one, knit two stitches, 
and then pass this single slip stitch over both of those. So again, a lot of tension on the working yarn to help hold that stitch down. Grab that slip stitch in the left needle and pull it over. That's a one stitch decrease. Again, slip one, knit two, grab that slip stitch, lots of tension on the working yarn, pull that over. And you can see here in my work, the little twist that it's giving it. And again, this is what it ends up looking like in the finished cap. It's very cute. That's it. I hope you have a lot of fun making these for all the babies you know, and maybe you'll make some for charity as well. Good luck.